Hey, what is going on dudes? It is Time Lord, you know one here, back with another video. Uh, today's video is going to be a requested video from uh, Bang Bang Potato on, uh, on YouTube. So thank you to him for requesting this. He requested this during one of his live streams that I was in the other day. Uh, and this is basically all of my Doctor Who related merchandise that I own. There's a there's a bit of it. There's not that much, but there, there's quite a bit. So I'm going to split this video up into a, a couple of parts. The uh, the first part will be the interiors. The second part will be the, the figures, and the third part would be all of the comics and signatures, and so on and so forth. So yeah, let's get on with the video. Okay, so to start off with, I'm going to do the Junk TARDIS from the Series 6 episode, The Doctor's Wife. Uh, this was made by a fan. It was sent in uh, to Blue Peter for a, uh, a competition, uh, actually, uh, for a new console room that would be used in an episode. So they released this toy, and I'm so upset that they didn't release this in the 5-inch scale, because this is the 3.5-inch scale, and I don't like the 3.5 inch scale. It's too small, it, there's not enough detail on it. The only thing that I really like about this is the fact that it has the spin, uh, spin and fly option at the bottom. See that little dial. Um, and the fact that this, uh, is it that panel? One of these, that panel there. That panel falls off as well, like it does in the show. And the whole thing is, pretty much breakable so you can take it all apart and put it all back together just like any of the others. Um, so it's not too bad of, a, of an interior. I like that it was made by a fan and that it was uh, from a competition as well. I thought that was really unique. So that is the first one. Let's get on with the second one. Okay so the second console that I am doing is the uh, Smith TARDIS. This is the gold variant instead of the neon. Uh, the neon one has actually got a um, officially released uh, toy. It's just you print it out on paper and you build it out of cardboard basically. Um, so this is the gold version. It's ba this is basically just cardboard. Mostly cardboard and plastic and I'm very disappointed because to go from that which is electronic and I'll turn to the features of that in the next one. So this, which has no features, there's no no buttons or anything. It's just, it's basically a back step. Um, but you may notice there's something custom about this one. And that is the fact that I have added my own LEDs into it. And if the wires haven't moved about, which of course they have, there are wires that go into the console and uh, light it up. I know the console is supposed to be green, I don't have any green LEDs, I only have red ones. But, for a custom, low budget, I'd say that looks pretty cool. For an upgrade as well. So you've got the fan at the top, you've got the, the gold time rotor with the console. To get those lights in I actually had to dremel a hole through the bottom which you can't quite see. But I had to ask my neighbour to do that because I, I don't own a dremel myself and yeah so that's basically the, uh, the Smith interior. Now for the tenant. Okay so I'm gonna leave the tenant artist where it is because it's way too uh, messy to move around and it's just way too like bulky with the way I've modified it. So the original um, character options prop only came with this section of the wall uh, so what I've done is I've extended the wall around and along with the uh, flight effects which are there, I need to sort that switch out because it's a bit buggy. So that's that's pretty much all you would get but I have added again some LEDs that go in around the top and also go 
around the edges. So it gives it that, that little bit more life to it. Um, so as I said, this, uh, this console obviously has uh, light and sound effects as this one does not, which again, backstep. Uh, so just to quickly showcase this, uh, this is a flight control. And again, pressing that will give you another sound. It's a more stabilised flight. Okay, so I'm going to move around this way. On uh, this panel here, we have this button. Uh, this gives us a kind of hectic sound effect. And it also plays the uh, power-up sound. Uh, oh, gotta move around for this one. Hello. So this panel here doesn't have any buttons. That's just for aesthetics. Uh, the monitor here swivels round, and that's broken. So I need to be careful. Uh, this one here, this blue switch, has some sound effects. So that first one was kind of the uh, the monitors, and the second one is just kind of the doctor walking around the TARDIS and throwing random objects around. Uh, on this panel. Here, uh, there is a switch. No, there's a button here. Oh wait, no, that's uh, uh, this panel actually all lifts up, like the um, series five. No, series one episode. Uh, it's 2005. That was uh, Boomtown uh, with the Slitheen, uh Margaret. The doc uh, Eccleston opened this panel and Margaret would be standing somewhere around here. Just, uh, I'd imagine about there. Uh, with the extrapolator at her feet and she'd be looking into the heart of the TARDIS. So, and then if you press it down, you get a sonic screwdriver. Let's show that. Uh, this panel only has one button. It's right there. Oh. And I, I put the 3D glasses on it from one of my doctors. Just because I don't like the doctors wearing 3D glasses all the time. It just doesn't suit the characters, like the figures. Um, so yeah, there's a button here. It's very difficult to see. Just at the end of my finger there. Press down on this. You have some uh, flight control effects. So like the. Uh, the lever here, and there's a pump around the other side. And if I press it again, you kind of get this distorted flight effect. So Basically, the Tenant TARDIS is and always will be one of the best TARDIS consoles toy version ever released. Uh, they just need to extend the backdrop because that is uh, just paper put on cardboard and it's not even like a, a decent seam there. It's a decent seam here because that's how it was made. But you see there where that piece is there. That's where the cutout for the door was. And speaking of the door, I've made it so it opens inwards. Um, because on this model, because of the ramp, it would not open inwards. So what I've done is I've filed down the piece at the top that would stop it. And that's basically all I've done. And I've given it a fresh coat of paint as well because I painted over it in a white at some point to make it look like the War Doctor's TARDIS. 
and I scrap the project and just paint it blue again. I need to do something about the windows though, because there's still the the grey. Uh, <laughs> if you can send me a new pair of doors, please do, but make sure you send a ramp and the two support beams as well, because they're super glued together. <laughs> yeah, that, that the uh, telephone door is permanently stuck in place, that's super glued shut. But that one is uh, free to open and move. Um, so I think that is it for the uh, the tenant TARDIS. Um, you know what, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do the exteriors now uh, because they do come under the figures as well. So onto that. Okay, so here in front of me I have four different versions of a TARDIS exterior model. One is custom made. Two are character options toys, and one is a money pot. So, I'll go over the money pot first, as it is one of the most simplest. Now, I'm not even sure this is actually a TARDIS, I think it's just a police box. Now, I've had this for a while, there's no money in it, I can shake it around, there's nothing in it. There's no lights and sound effects, it's just a basic money pot. Um, and it's good for collectors, basically, if you want a decent money pot. The only complaint I have about this is the uh, signage on the front, because it's like weird symbols and it's not accurate at all. And even the top just says police. It's not even public call box, it just says police. Um, but it's good if you, if you want to like get it for a, a Doctor Who fan. So, yeah, that's that. <coughs> I'm going to leave that in because I don't want to edit anything out. So, we're going to move on to the Smith exterior now. So this is the uh, second TARDIS exterior in the Revived series. And this is the only TARDIS uh, exterior character options toy which has a steady lit lamp when it is materialised like that. So it stays lit and even when the doors are open. Now the only complaint I have about this is there's no interior lights. So this is actually going to become a custom at some point. I'm going to buy one of these ones, take off the roof, strip out the circuit with all the lights and that, and then solder that one onto this one. So I'll get the lights from that one, at the top at least, into this one so I can have the signs lit up. But I don't know about the interior, I'll have to cut some holes out for that. Unless I just use the uh, the frame, because they're literally the exact same model, just a different paint job and different windows. Because character options are lazy. Uh, so the inside is obviously the 2010 version. The uh, pull to open sign is present. And it does open with the incorrect phone on the inside. It has a different phone. See, I told you it's the same. And obviously it has the same spring lock door as well, with the St. John Ambulance badge present as well. So, that is the 2010 variant. 2005 variant is right here. This is the uh, Eccleston Tenant, which is used for that interior. Now, if I go and turn this on, it's going to be a lot louder because the batteries have changed. And there it is. So as you can see, we have a lit interior. Oh my god, it's a miracle. This is what I wanted for that. But they were a disappointment with that one. This one, again, it's, it, it goes the same for the interiors. That's a back step. This is what they should have kept it as. You've got the, the pulsating light in the centre to make to make it look as though the interior of the TARDIS is actually bigger on the inside and it's beating. The door, uh, the telephone, is the correct one from the 2005 variant. And the door opens. That door stays open. It has the spring lock mechanism. The only complaint about, I have about this and the fact it probably has this is because I bought it off eBay. Is second hand so you can very faintly see on video you can see the light through these panels and on the other side you cannot 
Now that's because on the inside there's supposed to be like a protective layer of black plastic and I think that got removed. So I'm going to take some black paint at some point, take the doors out and uh, and paint it. And I'm going to do the same for the roof as well because you can see the lights for these <laughs> excuse me, are shining through the roof. Now the light on this one is extremely bright and you can see it offers different sound and light effects, I won't go through them all but it's based essentially the same as that one, just with more lights and a side profile for each I'll tell you what, I could do that all day just looking at the camera with those lights especially with the blur, I'm using my um, Galaxy S7 for, uh, for recording this because I don't have an actual camera So, this is the best I can do, but it's a pretty good camera for what it is. Now, I don't even need to use stabilisation, because I'm a pretty good uh, cameraman. It doesn't shake too much. So, yeah, I could do this all day. Just grab the light of that and just twist it around like that, so it blurs the uh, call box sign. But I won't do that because I've got other things to review. So let's uh, turn that off to preserve the lights. This next one is the first custom TARDIS I ever built. Now, you may wonder the light is missing. Now, let me tell you something. The reason the light is missing on this one is because the lights from this one are in the ones that I gave to. Tonic. So he has the lights for this TARDIS and you can see it has the same principle, the, the roof lifts off so you can access the solar panel inside, there's a bunch of Lego in that in there because I was going to make a, make a kind of Lego keyboard but gave up on the project. Um, this does need some repair work, the uh, pull to open, no, the public call box signs, uh, one of them is missing on that side. Uh, the light structure itself is gone, and the, the doors just don't open. Look. And it's just a hole for the windows, so you can just grab it there. But it does make a good storage unit. And where it's been sat in the rain, you get this lovely weathered effect. Um, it's, almost, it's basically how it looks when you leave just any wood out for way too long it just gives it a bubbly effect and yes I'm using an Airfix toolbox for a stand okay so the next thing you're probably not going to count as an exterior but I'm going to count it as a prop it's not a TARDIS but this uh, was used in Planet of the Dead and the Satan Pit no it wasn't used in Planet of the Dead it was used in the Satan Pit and Planet of the Ood uh, so this is the capsule that the uh, Tenth Doctor uses to go down into the Satan Pit and meet the Devil. Uh, you can see the whole thing on the inside. You can't see it too clearly because it's dark. But you can see there's a button on the wall. Um, you've got some kind of speaker grill on that side which you can't see. And on that side it does in fact have the monitor that the Doctor used to speak to Rose and the Beast even has the glass window. It's not even glass, it's plastic, but still. And then you've got the four struts at the bottom, which is what was used to secure it in place, and the drum at the top, which had the wire attached to it, which they also used to abseil into the pit. Um, so yeah, that is my exterior collection plus one capsule. Uh, now I'm gonna move on to the biggest. Okay, so the first figures I'm going to go over is this uh, Lego figure set that I got from Collectomania Comic Con last year. Um, I went this year as well, but I didn't get any of these Lego sets, so they didn't have any. So let me just open the box. You can't see much, but I need to put a Weeping Angel together quickly. Uh, uh, I need to take off the head. I might bloop that bit out. Because uh, taking off somebody's head is not a good idea. Don't worry, I'm not worth murdering anyone. If anything, I'm bringing someone to life. Um, 
Except you wouldn't want a weeping angel to come to life, would you? Where's your wing gone? Uh oh! Did I really lose the wing? Did I? Oh no, it's there. Oh! I was going to say, if I lost the wing to that weeping angel, this whole set would be worth fuck all. Okay. So, I put the weeping angel standing up to the side. It's falling over. So, I'll do the weeping angel first. It's a basic Lego minifigure. Um, with instead of just having the standard legs, it has this two block, uh, two by two stud brick. And it slopes up to a two by one. And it has a, a printed pattern on it to make it look like a weeping angel. And it won't fucking focus because of the light. Focus. I'll put an image up on uh, an image up on the screen of it. So next we have Miss Clara Oswald. Oh, I like how that focuses. How great. Then we have Peter Cabaldi in his blue suit, as seen in series eight. Then we have Peter Capaldi in his dark blue suit, as seen in series 9. We have Mr. Christopher Eccleston. This is the ninth Doctor, as seen in 2005. This is the only Christopher Eccleston figure that I have. Then I have a Matt Smith figure. This isn't the only Matt Smith figure I have. I have some from... Uh, what's it called? It's not character options... There's another Lego company that does um, set-based things instead of just like the standard Lego stuff, and that's where that's from. Uh, we have Gemma Redgrave, or oh. the Brigadier's daughter. Kate. Kate Lethbridge Stewart. There you go. It came to me in the end. Um, and then you have Mr. Tom Baker. So I'm going to put these back in their respectful pods. That one goes in that one up there, that one goes there, that one goes there. And the Weeping Angel, I need to take apart. Okay, so now I am reviewing the Doctors that I have. Ooh, what's happened there? Give me a brightness increase. Don't tell me it just fucked up the energy. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to do these in order of the way I purchased them. So this is the 10th Doctor with trench coat. This is the 11th Doctor. This is the 11th Doctor with Fez. He also comes with his uh, mop, because that's from the um, Pandora cassette. And then we have the 10th Doctor with 3D sunglasses, which are currently on board the TARDIS. So. And now for the part we all dread, the robots. So I know you may not count him as a robot, but he's technically part Dalek, so I'm counting it. Um, so I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine Daleks. I have two of the 2005 gold variants. I have Davros, I have Dalek Sec. I have one of the classic Daleks, I have another classic Dalek, and I have a classic Supreme Dalek. Those, those three came in a set. This is a uh, 3.5 inch scale Dalek, as is that one. They're not too different, however that one's missing an eye stalk, because it broke. 
I know, I'm a horrible person, joking. I, I hate I, I hate Daleks, so. Then we have K9. K9, I have two variants of. We have the uh, push and go, well, pull and go K9, which is basically on a mode, on a rotor, so if you pull it back, it will just go on its own. And then we have the remote controlled variant, which I lost the controller for. <coughs> yeah. I do apologise for that. Um. So they're basically both the same. This version is from the season two episode, um, School Reunion, where uh, Sarah Jane Smith returns for the first time in the series, and we find that K9 is slightly damaged, hence why there's a bit of rust on the metal. So that's that variant. This is the Mark III, which is the one seen at the end of the episode, so that's all good. Um, I have a single Toclophane. Still deadly, still powerful, still able to kill a human. Still is a human, and yeah, it's top of the I just throw it out of the way. Uh, next, I have three Cybermen. I have the John Lumix Cyberman, which is from the alternate universe. It's basically just a Cyberman with those uh, six bolts in his chest, uh, which attach to his uh, life support system, and blue eyes. And that's about it for, for Limic. Oh, and he doesn't have a, a Cyber Blaster on his arm. Uh, this variant does, however. It's very faint to see. Because there's no light again! But there it is, that's the, that is the uh, Cyber Blaster. And that's basically just standard Cyberman, except I've pulled the ears off. So. Yeah. And then we have the. Non-existent Cyberman, the, the the broken Cyberman, the one from the Big Bang and the Pandora Corrobans, uh with Matt Smith. You know where the head tries to eat Amy. Yeah, and the head actually comes off, as does the foot, as I recently discovered. Um, that, that's all. That's all the Daleks. Um, so I'm just going to quickly scan over here, I'm going to move all my doctors out of the way. So here we have other creatures and companions. So here we have Martha Jones. I have two Sarah Janes of the same outfit as well. I have a Rose Tyler. I have a Don Noble. I have two Captain Jacks. I have Jack from Torchwood. And I have Jack from Series 1 uh, in his nice uh, army uniform. I actually met uh, John Barrowman, he's really nice. He does have a firm handshake as well. Uh, we have the parents Ladine and the uh, child Ladine. That's not actually in Doctor Who, that's uh, from Sarah Jane Adventures, but I still thought it was a nice inclusion. So, yeah. Now, these I hate because they're, once again, they're 3.5 inch figures, so they don't fit with the standard range. Like, look, that, that's feet to feet, and it, yeah. This is supposed to be a nice warrior. I have two of these because I bought two of the same set and thought one was bigger. Nope. Uh, Weeping Angel. This is the, the Weeping Angel from... Tomb of Angels, I think it is, with the Atlans and Crash the Byzantium. Um, no, yes, and then this is also can be used as the Angel from the Series 7, Episode 5, where Amy and Rory say goodbye to the Doctor for the last time. Then we have a Silorian from series 5, uh, Cold Blood. We have Peter Capaldi, 3.5 inch scale. Get out of here. Uh, Jadoon with a missing uh, a hand. A Scarecrow. Gwen Cooper. Yes, she's Welsh. An Ood, missing uh, translatable, so I think this is Nephew. 
The Master. Why I didn't include this with the Doctors and just called it a Time Lord section, I didn't know. But I really want a Michelle Gomez figure, as well as a John Sim figure, so I can recreate the scene from The Doctor Falls, where the Master kills Missy, which is his her future self. So, yeah. Then we have this confusing thing, because I don't know whether to call it Rory the Roman, or just a random centurion. I'm guessing it's Rory the Roman, judging by the face sculpt, if I can get it to focus in some light. There you go. Just judging by the face sculpt, I think that is actually Rory. Um, which is why I've paired him next to Amy! And no, I'm not going to show you up her skirt. Not going to happen. As much as he looks, we're not going to. Um, just two more, actually. We have Chip, and we have the Cassandra shell with the brain, which you can't see. Oh, come on, fuck us. There we go. The brain. That's um. Cassandra's brain. Um, what else? Okay, so that is all of the. Uh, we've done the interiors. We've done the figures and the exteriors. Now it's time for all the comics and signatures. So let's get onto that. Okay, so I've just uh, sorted out the pile of things that I'm going to use for my display case up there. Um, so for now. What we are going to do is we're going to dive in to the plethora of books and drawings and signatures and that that I have got, as well as DVDs. So let's start with them first. Uh, the first one isn't really Doctor Who, but it's Torchwood. I have the Children of Earth soundtrack. Um, it consists of 40 tracks from day one of Children of Earth to day five of Children of Earth, as you can see there. And... I actually bought this from the Northampton market. It wasn't uh, too expensive, but I'm not going to say the price because I didn't know. But Mum did. Um, so here are my four Doctor Who DVDs in order. My cousin actually owns pretty much the entire from series five, uh, series one to series four, and I really want the collection, but I'm not allowed it. So this is the uh, the first one I own. I actually own more DVDs than this, but they're in different cases. These are the ones that I own with the cases. This is the first one I own. So this is a volume four, and it's uh, Boomtown, Bad Wolf, and the Parting of Ways. So that is where Christopher Eccleston regenerates. So actually, I've got that in the wrong order. So this is a volume three. There's The Long Game, Father's Day, The Empty Child, and The Doctor Dances. So this, is uh, where Rose goes back uh, with the Doctor to see her father before he dies. Uh, that's Father's Day. Uh, the Empty Child, you know, and the Doctor dances. Obviously, it's the Empty Child. I need my mummy. No, I'm bang bang. I knew it would squeeze it in somewhere. There you go, Tonic, that's your clip. Um, this is the one I just went over. This one is Rise of the Cybermen and the Age of Steel. This is the Series 2 uh, set with uh, David Tennant and Rose uh, in the parallel Earth. And then this one is set in both real and parallel Earth, uh, where Rose says goodbye to the Doctor, as well as Fear Her, which is one of my favourite episodes. And so what? Fear Her is the only Doctor Who story that gave me nightmares. Simply because of this guy, which you will see on screen right about now. This guy gave me nightmares for straight, like, two years maybe, until Mum finally got me a dream capture. So, I'm happy she got me yet, because I no longer have the nightmares. And I haven't had a nightmare since. So, let's help that. Uh, next thing we're going to go on to, I have... A couple signatures, a couple pictures that I would like to show. I 
think that's all of them. Is that all of them? Uh, I have a picture frame. Uh oh. <laughs> uh, I don't remember where I put it. Oh, I did a bad. Um, I'll have to have a look for that. I have a, a signed picture frame from Colin Baker somewhere around probably in a drawer somewhere safe so yeah you'll have to deal with these ones for now so this is one I got at my previous Comic Con this is from Sylvester McCoy uh, that is from Kai Owen that's the first one I went to and this is from the previous one that I went to that is me Oh my god, face reveal. Oh crap. Oh no, it's a face reveal. Oh no. <laughs> okay, so this is a picture of me uh, by the TARDIS console. That is the actual TARDIS prop behind us. That's Colin Baker there, and that's Sylvester McCoy right there. Very blurry, but that's definitely Sylvester McCoy. I'll tell you what, rumours are true, they are excellent huggers. You know what, I would have met him twice had I gone to MCM Comic Con uh, this year in London, but don't have the money. Uh, tell you what, while we're over here, let's have a look at some drawings that I've done. So, this is the first one. This is the uh, 1968 TARDIS. Let's see if I can focus. Focus! Very fine lines, so... Okay, so it can't it can't focus on it properly, but you can see a rough outline of it, kind of. If towards there you go. So that's that's the rough outline of the 1968 TARDIS. That's the Troughton TARDIS. Then there's the 2005 TARDIS. There's the 2005 TARDIS, which I then coloured. And then I did a test version of the 63 TARDIS in Totters Lane, which isn't finished. And then I did another 2005 3D version, which turned out crap. So That's all of my drawings. Um, this is a duvet bedsheet. Uh, now my mum is going to make this a curtain set when I get my room decorated. As you can see, I've got a stripped wall here. Because my bedroom's pink, if you haven't noticed. My bedroom is entirely pink. Look. Pink and white. And that's actually a pink wall. That is not white. That is a pink wall. It just doesn't show up on camera. Um, well, yeah, I also have that. And I have two pop final figures down there. And I have a TARDIS alarm clock. I forgot to mention them. So I'll put them in now. But yeah, that is being turned into a curtain set. You can see it's a single duvet and pillowcase. So Mum's going to sew them together for me. Uh, then we have a calendar, which I never use. The 2017 calendar, it's a year old. As uh, a first doctor, second doctor, third doctor, fourth doctor, my favourite. Fifth doctor, sixth doctor, seventh doctor, eighth doctor, ninth doctor. 10th Doctor, 11th Doctor, 12th Doctor, and the only Doctor it doesn't include is the War Doctor, which is John Hurt. Rest in peace. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I have this. This is one of the later magazines. This is issue... number 523. And it's basically just a 3D panorama, uh, panorama image of the TARDIS, which I love. And it's the, um, it's the 13th Doctor's TARDIS as well. And I've seen images for the interior, and I absolutely fucking love it. I'm not going to show you guys, I'm going to leave you to find it for yourselves. But yeah. So this I got for Christmas. This is a character encyclopedia. 
So with all the doctors and more than 200 friends and foes inside of this, every single friend and foe has a fact file in here. This is basically Sarah Jane Adventures fact file in a book. Thank you, Mr. Smith. We needed you. Now we don't. Um, oh, here we go. 50th anniversary annual. 2016 annual. 2013 annual. And the 2009 annual. I had the 2008 annual as well. That had a 3D analymph uh, on the front of it. And it was basically a TARDIS, and if you turn it one way, it would, it would dematerialize. If you turn it the other way, it would rematerialize. This one is just boring. It just has like this weird um, kind of 3D holographic effect, but it basically does nothing. And Davros is on the back. So. Yeah! Oh, okay, right, now the books. I have the quiz book three. Art of Destruction. Stone Rose. Haven't read any of them. I then have this. Haven't read it. And I also have the Doctor Who quiz book. I do apologise, I've reached my maximum uh, recording limit. And I'll tell you what, it's a good thing too, because I've just run out of items. So, you know what? I've already reached 100 subscribers. And I do a face reveal. So, yes, it's me. It's Hayden. You know, it, People from school know me. You know what I look like, so this isn't a surprise to you. For, but for those of you subscribers who do not know who I am, this is what I look like. See me in the street. Feel free to stop me, I don't mind having pictures or whatever. Or just saying hello. So, honestly, I think that's the end of this video. I've gone through everything I can. That was about 30 quid from BNM, I got it for Christmas. And uh, I actually saw posters for that in the works, I think it was. A couple of days ago. And I was thinking, why would I get it for, te for a tenner, the works, or for just a poster, when I have it for 20 or 30 on a canvas. Why? Better quality. You don't want a poster, you want a canvas. The last longer. <laughs> oh. Anyway, dudes, I'm going to sign this video off here. Uh, thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, leave a like, leave a comment, and subscribe. Uh, shout out to Bang Bang Potato, his link will be in the description. Make sure to check him out. Uh, as well as the Dirty Bastards Discord group, that is down in the description as well make sure to check out that Discord, because all four members of the Dirty Bastard Discord group, sorry, all five members, as uh, Bang Bang Potato has already said, well, sorry, Bang Bang Potato has already said, I have been invited to be a part of the Dirty, uh, Dirty Bastard Discord group, as well as the Dirty Bastard group in general. I am a Dirty Bastard. <laughs> that can be taken out of context in any way you want. I don't care, I'm part of that group, and I'm so happy Thank you very much for inviting me, Tonic. I can't wait to do videos with you in the future, mate. I honestly can't. And we need to get back on that GTA 5 as well. Um, I've, been, I've actually been doing some things on there recently. I have five new cars, and they're really, really fast, so we may have to do a race. Yeah. So, anyway, dudes, I will see you in the next video. Leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe. Peace.